What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 video. So it is series two and we've had enough time, I think, uh, where I can do my, my bad take video. Uh, what this is, is it's going to be me talking about uh, five Pokemon that I think are actually pretty heavily underrated in series two that I think could have some sauce to them. Uh, but yeah, usually it's a bunch of bad takes, so I'm just gonna warn you like right at the right right up front, you know, it, don't don't take this like super super seriously. I mean, this is like my honest opinion. I, I won't lie, but uh, it, just just keep that in mind, you know. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, go ahead and get into this. If you guys enjoy this standpoint of time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. Uh, and leave a like if you enjoy. Also, I'm kind of congested, so, you know, just ignore it. Uh, just, just a little congested. Also, if you want an extra video at the top of each week, become a YouTube member, Twitch sub, or Patreon member. Just letting you know. So, yeah. Uh, basically, Series 2 has had a few tournaments. We've had the Orlando Regional Championships, which is where a lot of my data is going to come from. But we have, we have also had, like, some side tournaments going on. Uh, so, there's been a lot of uh, data to sort of figure out what is like the best Pokemon in the format or like what like the best archetypes are. And these are Pokemon that I think either do well into what's like super good right now or can fit onto what's good. So let's go ahead and start off with Iron. This is in no particular order, by the way. This is just like five Pokemon that I want to talk about real quick. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to ramble just so you know. So number uh, one on my list, even though it's not in order, is Iron Jugulus. Iron Jugulus is a Paradox Pokemon, which means that uh, it has, you know, the Quark Drive ability. If Electric Terrain is up, it gets 1.3 at its highest stat or 1.5 of its speed. I'm going to say that like 99% of the time you want to go 1.5 in speed. Uh, and that's because Iron Jugulus has a really decent speed tier that's going to be able to outspeed everything if it gets the booster off. The only thing is uh, opposing booster Pokemon, namely uh, Booster Bundle, is like really, really good in the Jugulus. So you have to be kind of careful with this guy. Uh, there have been a couple of ways of running it. My personal favorite way of running it is actually without a rain setter. You can put it next to like a palafin with like Terra flying and just run like rain dance yourself. And that's actually really reliable, especially versus sun teams. You're going to be able to get that off a uh, second. Uh, and also you're going to be able to get 100% accurate hurricanes that are boosted by Terra flying hurricane or Terra flying uh, on your iron jugular. So that's like just really nice into it. The reason I actually don't like running iron jugular the way that a lot of other people would being Terra Water, um, where is it? Yeah, Terra Water with uh, Hydro Pump. This is like a thing that you see occasionally. Is because I don't like the defensive uh, balance of it with Pelipper. This guy's already a Flying and Dark type, and Pelipper's already an Electric Water type. There's a lot of weaknesses shared between those two uh, that I'm just not comfortable running, especially into like Bundle. Bundle will just annihilate that lead. Uh, so I like having Iron Jugulus be the Rain Setter, with like a Palafin next to it. Because while I will say that, you know, Pelipper is a little bit better of a, well, a lot better because it has like instant rain uh, next to Palafin. Iron Jugulus, if you want to run it on a team, has this ability to be like the fast tailwinder for the rest of your team uh, and has the ability to hit these hurricanes if you need to. So if you really like, if it's more like a, I need a fast tailwind situation and less of a, I need a rain setter situation, you just put Iron Jugulus on there and it's like just a really good Pokemon. Like, just look at like the Pokemon it does well into. Uh, it can absolutely shred non-assault vest Iron Hands with Terra Flying Hurricane. Uh, if it outspeeds a bundle, it gets one shot by Hurricane. Uh, Golden Go can get Dark Pulse if you don't want to end up running that final movie. You just could, you know, put Dark Pulse on it. Um, Don Dozo can get shredded by Terra Flying Hurricane if it isn't at plus two. Uh, what else? Indeedy gets Dark Pulse. Like, there's a lot of things in this format. Great Tusk especially just drops to this thing. Like, its main competitor, as far as Tailwind setters go, are Talonflame and Roaring Moon. And I'll be honest, Roaring Moon feels underwhelming a lot of time. It feels like it doesn't even pick up KOs when it really should. So I think Iron Jugulus is, like, just a nice little alternative. If you, if you like, need a fast special attacker that hits, like, a truck, uh, go ahead and try it out. I've had a few teams that where it's done pretty well. Next up, Sableye. So, you might be saying... Okay, but Mr. Boosted, why wouldn't we just run the other prankster Pokemon that's like explicitly better, Grimmsnarl? And that's because, as it turns out, Grimmsnarl isn't better across the board. A good way to separate these two, because they actually gave uh, Sableye access to some really important tools that it didn't have before, and now has light screen to reflect. Dual screens is like really big for Sableye. A good way to separate these two in your mind and figure out what roles they fill is Grimmsnarl is offensive Sableye with less support moves. Uh, and Sableye is 
just like a, a version of Grim Snarl that's more specialized in the support move category. Like as far as like the support moves that they get, Sableye has an insane library where Grim Snarl, while, while it does have a lot, you know, fake out, fake tears, uh, dual screens, and like taunt and thunder wave, uh, that's like, it also has Misty Train, which is kind of big. Uh, Sableye has like far more tools. And while they are very niche, if you find yourself needing these tools, uh, you're gonna wanna go with the Sableye. So here. Uh, also, Sableye's fake out of me, which is really awesome. So it does have dual screens. Obviously, you know, light clay plus dual screens. Not light ball. Light play plus dual, light clay plus dual screens is a set that you can run. Uh, and also have like Will-O-Wisp and Foul Play to make it like super useful. Uh, that is that is kind of like stepping on Grim Snarl's toes because it will do that as well. What Sableye can actually do for you is if you don't want to run like dual screens, you can actually run Encore or Disable. And those are very useful tools. So what Encore can do for you is it's actually like an anti-trick room tech. If you see a Pokemon like, I don't know, uh, let's say Armor Rouge with like no psychic terrain up going for a trick room, the next turn, instead of allowing Armor Rouge to get like a, an expanding force off or an armor cannon, you can actually Encore them. And because the last move used by them was trick room, you'll force them to reverse the trick room when they finally move. So that's really big. It also locks down setup Pokemon. Uh, if a Don Dozo wants to go for Substitute, you can actually now Encore them into a Substitute. That's like really fun. Actually, does, is Encore sound based? Let me know in the comments. I actually don't know if Encore is sound based. I'm pretty sure it is. It, I don't I don't think it makes sense for it not to. But yeah, uh, other things. You can Encore a Pokemon into going for Follow Me. You can Encore a Pokemon into going for Tailwind. It'll shut down a Pokemon for a few turns, which is really cool. Uh, Grim Snarl doesn't have access to this tool. Like that's like kind of like big, you know? Uh, Disable is also really nice. If you're facing off versus an opposing, uh, let's say an Amoogus, right? And the Amoogus wants to go for a Rage Powder in the next turn, you don't wanna have to deal with that. One, you could taunt it, but two, you could disable it, forcing the Amoogus to go for other things. Or if uh, a Pokemon, like, the difference between like Encore, dis or not Encore and Disable, the difference between like Taunt and Disable is Disable can also do it versus offensive moves. So let's say that you're facing off versus uh, let's go with, let's go with a, uh, uh, what's a Pokemon? Iron Bundle, right? Let's say you're going up against an Iron Bundle and you have like a speed boosted Iron Jugulus, but they're like Focus Ash Iron Bundle and you really don't want to get Icy Winded. Otherwise, like you're just going to lose in the long run. You can like protect your Iron Jugulus and then allow your Sableye to get Icy Winded. But then at the start of the next turn, actually go for priority disable, and it makes it so that move is just stuffed. They they don't actually get to use that move, so that's like really big. Uh, and also just you know it's it's like a nice defensive tool. Like if you want to protect your Dondozo from uh, from clear smog, you can actually disable the clear smog after protecting the previous turn. Like it's basically just meant to be like a stuffing tool. Like no, you don't get to do that, and you don't get to do it for the next four turns. And that sometimes will force a switch. Sometimes there are Pokemon that really need to use that move to be useful. Uh, like if there's a mouse hold on the field and you want to block a population bomb or a follow me, that's like huge. So I think disable is really nice. Will-O-Wisp is also a tool that's over Grimstarl. Foul play is just like a generally good support move. But yeah, beyond that, dual screens, it also has access to knock off, icy wind for speed control. Uh, and yeah, it still has like Thunder Wave for like better speed control. Faint is kind of a cool move. And of course, the big one, Quash. Quash just makes this Pokemon go last. Like, that's, like, really cool. You force a Pokemon to go last. So, yeah. Uh, Alan Martinez actually did top cut the Orlando Regional Championships with a Sableye. This Sableye was actually running Light Clay, Terra Grass with Encore, Reflect, uh, Disable, and Light Screen. So, no offensive moves whatsoever. I personally wouldn't leave the house without Foul Play because uh, it could be really bad. But, obviously, if this team made it to top cut, we know that this is a uh, pretty reliable Sableye. So, yeah. Sableye at number two. Next up is Glamora. Now, Glamora is, like, heavily underrated. And the way I know is that Emilio keeps top cutting with a Glamora. And it's, like, choice specs. Where is it? Yeah. So Glamora has, like, some really cool tools that it can use, right? Power Gem, Sludge Bomb, Earth Power, Sludge Wave, Dazzling Gleam. It has, like, a really wide variety of uh, support, not support coverage, of special coverage moves. But the biggest thing about it is just how hard it hits and its ability. 130 base special attack is really strong. Like it's it's like the Hiligo esque uh, power. Actually, is it stronger? Let me see. Yeah, it's stronger. Its sludge bombs and power jabs are stronger than the Hiligos, uh, and it has 
access to toxic debris. So a lot of a lot of the time when you like use Glamora, what's gonna end up happening is you're going to get like huge damage, either a KO or chunk something for like 60 to like 80%. Uh, whether you sludge bomb, choice specs, dazzling gleam, or like whatever. Also, like I think Terra Fairy is like really nice on this guy because it lets you get those specs, dazzling gleams, and turns it into like another fairy type. Uh, that's fighting fairy. But yeah, uh, Terra Grass is usually better just defensively. But what ends up happening is since a lot of the Pokemon in this format that beat Glamora are not the special attackers, I will say that, you know, resisting Moonblast is like really big for this guy into the uh, Fluttermane matchup. And having to land a Hydro Pump versus this thing with Iron Bundle is like really bad. Most of the time, you're going to get hit by a physical move, which will activate Toxic Debris. So... Every time it gets hit by a physical attack, Toxic Spikes are set to the opposing side of the field. That's amazing for, like, timer stalling, uh, and also just for, like, wearing down the opposing team. You're breaking Focus Sashes, you're making it some Pokemon that are usually quite defensive are now poisoned, which isn't common to VGC, you usually don't get poisoned that often. So, having that just be for the entire game, since there's, like, no hazard clearing moves getting used right now, that's huge. So, the Glamora flowchart is, lead with it, chunk the team for, like, 70%, and then leave Toxic Debris. Like, it's insane. Like, it's so good. So, yeah. And Emilio went 10-0 with it in Swiss. And we see it... I think he's used it a few times. Uh, we actually don't see it anymore in Top Cut. But, like, that's that's why it's, like, so underrated. Like, it, just on paper, you can understand why this thing has so much value. So, just, like, a quick... I, I just wanted to gush about Glamora real quick. Because it's a Pokemon I really want to use. Next is Mousehold. And I will say, I made a video with Neil that I have to apologize for, I very much underrated just how good Mousehold was. I said it fell off, and it was probably the biggest fall off since Series 1. Uh, it, it is not true, I will say. We saw a lot of Mousehold in Top 32. Uh, I think there were four Mousehold teams, and not all of them ran Annihilate, but all of them ran Friend Guard. Friend Guard is a ability that's actually pretty rare in Pokemon. I think there is there's a few Pokemon that get it this gen. Uh, we have Jigglypuff, <laughs> Scatterbug, Spupa, and like Vivillon, right? So, and, and Mousehold. So, Mousehold is the best of all these because it has the best support move pool with Follow Me uh, and just other like really cool moves. It has Fake Tears if you want to like combo into a, like a slower special attacker. It has Taunt, it has Thunder Wave, uh, it has After You if you really want to use it. I've run that. And it also has Baby Doll Eyes, which is really cool. I think that Charm is usually going to be better, but Baby Doll Eyes does have priority. Uh, so it makes it so that way you can actually like versus a trick room team if they have like an iron hands and they go for a sword stance if you want you could like tear a ghost block the drain punch and then go for baby doll eyes and lower that attack stats like that's really really cool uh it also has access to like encore and all these like great support move pool uh move tools uh but mainly it's just going to be used to like allow annihilate to set up like that's the biggest thing annihilate uh is going to very easily be able to get off like you know, Rage Fist boost by comboing into this thing. Like, you would drop Baby Doll Eyes for, like, beat up, right? And Friend Guard's gonna make it so Annihilate, like, doesn't drop to basically anything because of that bulk and taking only 75% uh, 75 damage. Uh, you then, like, follow away, or follow me away hits and then just go for, like, Rage Fist, which is now, what, uh, you get hit three times by beat up, I think, when Mouse Holds next to you, so that's 200 base power. Like, that's a strong move, right? Uh, other Pokemon we see it do well next to in tournament, we actually saw... Uh, a top cut team that didn't have Annihilate, but did have, uh, was it, it was, yeah, Alex Underhill used, like, Mousehold plus, uh, what's his name, Iron Hands, which is just, like, really good, because it's, like, it makes it easier to belly drum, and also just Mousehold is just, like, a really good Pokemon overall, like, I really underestimated how much use it could get, Safety Goggles plus Terra Ghost makes it so, like, the counterplay versus Mousehold on lead is super limited, uh, you Terra Ghost to block Fake Out, or you just, don't do anything and just be like safety goggles to block spore and rage powder. You just ignore that. So I think safety goggles is especially important for the beat up set because uh, a lot of Amoogus, when you lead off with mouse one plus annihilate, want to rage powder away the beat up to prevent the setup. But safety goggles just makes it so that this is an option. Ah, uh, however, mouse hold. <laughs> what was that noise I made? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that noise I made was, but mouse hold is actually going to be able to be a mouse hold counter by going for follow me versus opposing Mousehold and making it so they can't set up the Annihilates. Like, that's, like, really cool. So, yeah. Uh, Mousehold, very good Pokemon. I super underestimated it. My apologies to this beautiful family. Final Pokemon, Aspothra. While we have seen Aspothra plus Sandy Shocks be a thing, I think that there was one in Top Cut. 
Was there one in Top Cut? There might have been none in Top Cut. Uh, yes, there was. Okay. Yeah, it was Max's team. I don't know how I forgot that because I was literally going to use it as an example. So we see this team, right? Uh, where is it? Yeah. So what you tend to see with the Spothra is Sandy Shocks with Booster Energy plus Gravity, thus making Hypnosis 100% accurate uh, and also making it so your Spothra is just going to be able to go for Lumina Crashes and break through basically anything that isn't a Dark type. But I think that a Spothra, even like without that setup, even without Sandy Shocks, is still kind of underrated because Speed Boost means that like in a turn or two, it's going to start outspeeding the fastest Pokemon in the game, which is going to be like Terra, not Terra, uh, which is going to be like Booster Energy Iron Bundle. Like outspeeding that's really big and your Lumina Crash is one of the best moves ever introduced to Pokemon. It is a guaranteed minus two special defense every time you land it on a Pokemon, meaning that every time you hit this move, it's doing basically double damage. Like it keeps snowballing. Nothing wants to switch in on it. And because it has speed boost, you can combo with this Pokemon. Let's say that you have an Espothra and a, uh, let's go with like a uh, Fluttermane, right? So turn one, what you can actually do is just go for like a double protect or just attack whatever you really want to. And then the next turn, your Espothra is going to outspeed your Fluttermane because of the speed boost, meaning that you can go for like Specs Dazzling Gleam plus uh, Lumina Crash. And the Lumina Crash will land before the Dazzling Gleam, making it so that way you get the special defense drop first and then basically everything drops. I think that's really scary. Uh, and it just it's just like a really good Pokemon. Hypnosis is also really decent. It's just like a last ditch effort to get KOs if you don't want to run like Dazzling Gleam. But the tech that we saw in the top cut team was actually Pounce, which is really clever. So speed control is really big this format. And like I mentioned, Espothra is going to be able to outspeed basically everything after like a turn or two. So having Pounce, a attacking move, something that can't be taunted, that always lowers the target speed by one stage is actually really clever. So what you could do with this thing is, like I said, like you outspeed opposing Flutter Mains. Let's say that you're using a Iron Bundle and your opponent has like a, a, a speed boosted Fluttermane because of booster energy, but you can't hit it first and you don't want to get one shot. So what you can do is do like the double protect and then the next turn go for like pounce and then you outspeed with your Iron Bundle. So you can go for like Terra Water, Hydro Pump or Terra Ice Freeze Jar or whatever and like secure a KO. So yeah, Aspothra feels like a really underexplored Pokemon that just... It's only doing one thing right now, but it feels like it, it can fit on so many teams. It's also like a Don Dozo counter. Like you just Lumina Crash, Lumina Crash, Lumina Crash, and it drops because it loses those spit, F, uh, those spit F boosts. So yeah, uh, that's my thoughts. These are like five underrated Pokemon. Uh, Iron Jugulus, Sableye, Glamora, Mousehold, Espothra. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Sorry if I was a little rambly and sorry if I was kind of congested. My bad. I'll try not to be sick next time. But yeah, if you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.